Hello everyone, welcome to Avisort. My name is Amit and today we are going to see SSL certificate with Spring Boot application. So basically here by using the SSL certificate, uh, we make our API accessible uh, with the HTTPS instead of HTTP. So let's uh, understand the difference between HTTP and HTTPS and SSL certificate. Now let's see the flow of HTTP request. So let's say we have a browser. On browser, we are uh, logging any website. Okay, so here we have to put the username password. And when we click on the login button, so after that it connects with the server through the HTTP request. But when it passing that data, uh, like username password to the server, so this data is in the form of raw data. So now hacker can take a benefit of that raw data and he can steal your data once he still he can easily get to know your username password so what is the solution on that here we can go for encryption so basically if you are passing that data in encrypted form then even if that hacker steal that data he cannot decrypt because to decrypt or to decode the data he needs a key and this key is provided by the only by the owner of the data or as a browser or server. So let's see HTTPS uh, request flow here. So for example, we have a browser here and we have server. On the server, we have to deploy our Spring Boot application and um, we have to configure SSL certificate. So let me tell you what things are uh, inside the SSL certificate. It contains two things. One is a private key, another is a public key. Now, after configuration of the SSL certificate, the next thing is browser is responsible for to call uh, to the server. So we can say that it's a handshake or hello from the browser to the server. Once that handshake is done, after this, uh, that server is responsible for to send SSL certificate. But this SSL certificate contains only public key. Okay, it contains only public key, not a private key. Now, once that browser receive that uh, certificate and that public key, after this, it will uh, validate that certificate. Like, it is, is it trusted certificate or not? Like that. Then the next thing is, uh, after that validation, the browser will create a random symmetric key, and it encrypt that key. And again, that symmetric key, okay, symmetric key with the encryption, it will send to the server while doing the encryption of that symmetric key it used the public key which is sent by which is sent by the server okay which is sent by the server now the next thing is it will send that encrypted key toward the server once server received that encrypted symmetric key now server is responsible for to decrypt that key so how it will decrypt he has to use that private key Okay, he has to use that private key by using that private key. He is able to it is able to decrypt that encrypted symmetric key. Now, if you uh, see here after decryption, uh, that server server also has uh, that decrypted key uh, or decrypted symmetric key and same key uh, that browser also have that same key. Okay, so both have that symmetric key in decrypted form. Now, after this, uh, that data trans uh, transaction or data transfer will start. And while transferring that data, that browser is responsible for to encrypt that data using the using the symmetric key. Okay, using the symmetric key. Once the server received that data, uh, encrypted data, now server has that symmet same symmetric key. So by using that same symmetric key, it is able to decrypt that data. Now, if server wants to send the data, uh, or encrypted data, then server has to encrypt this data using same symmetric key. And again, server will send that data toward the browser. Now browser already have that symmetric key. So that's why he can easily or it can easily decrypt that data. So once that uh, secured connection is established using the uh, that SSL certificates and that symmetric key, and even after that hacker if hacker tried or hacker is trying to steal that data and he get that data but he will get that data in form of 
encrypted okay he get the encrypted data and he it is not possible for him to decrypt the data without this symmetric key so in that way that ssl will work now let's see how we can apply that ssl certificate to our spring boot application and how we can run our application on the https instead of http so let's see so let me show you uh, how to create a ssl certificate so basically here there are two ways one way is we can purchase that ssl certificate from the third party vendor and uh, you can get that certificate for free for 90 days and again you have to renew that certificate so you can use uh, for lifetime this certificate free from the vendors uh, but in that case uh, you have to renew it after every 90 days another way is called as a self science ssl certificate uh, here we are taking help of java and java has a tool called as a key tool by using this command we can able to create our own self signed certificate okay now uh, let me explain that command so basically we have to use uh, key tool uh, then gen pair so this is a command okay to create that certificate after this alias so you can give any name as a alias like my app avsoft that you want then key algorithm that means we are defining here what algorithm that we want to or what encryption algorithm should be there now the next thing is key size so it's a size of that key okay so 2048 is a bits okay so that much of that much of the uh, size uh, will be there for that certificate now store type so there are multiple types of store so we are using here pkcs12 which is very common for the java now the next thing is key store and we are giving here key store file name basically this is the file that will get generated okay after executing this command and that file called as a key store inside that file we have to store our ssl certificate okay but by using that command it will generate a key store with that certificate but in case if you purchase certificate from the outside then in that case you have to create this key store for your application and in that key store you have to uh, save that or you have to insert that ssl certificate for this there is a one different command okay but right now we are uh, seeing here self signed ssl certificate so let's focus here after this there is a validity so here we are giving just validity of that certificate okay 365 date it's uh, i think it's uh, 10 years okay for 10 years that's it once you execute this command on the command prompt it will generate that certificate okay so i have already copied this command so let me show you how to how it work uh, i have already copied this command you can see okay so what you have to do uh, you have to open the cmd and once you open the cmd you have to paste that command don't worry about that command i will uh, provide this command into description and then you have to uh, click on enter okay enter once you enter it will ask you the password so you can give any password that you want then uh, again it will ask you password then uh, what's my first name let's say amit then organization let's say av soft you can give any value here don't worry about this then the next thing is uh, okay av soft then city is pune uh, then mh maharashtra and uh, two letter country code let's say in that's it okay so are you confirm yes that's it so here if you see on in new folder that certificate is created basically it's not certificate it's a key store which contains certificate so let me open now you can see that key store is there so let's configure this key store in our application now here we have key store okay with the ssl certificate let's configure this thing into the spring boot application so let me show you i have created here simple spring boot application which could contain only one controller uh, called as a ssl controller and we have one single api called as a slash hello api so let's run that spring boot application first and let's hit that hello api and let's see is it working or not okay so you can see uh, localhost 800 hello you can see here uh, i'm able to access this okay and let me clear it clear you again okay it's a http okay not https it's a http that's it now let's configure this thing 
for the HTTPS. So for this, what we have to do, uh, let's open the application dot property, and then uh, we need some uh, properties. Okay, so I will explain these things. Don't worry about this. Now the next thing is go to our the uh, get key store, copy this, and paste in our resource folder. Okay, in our resource folder. That's it. Now let me explain these properties. Okay, so basically these are properties specific to that key store. Here we are giving the address of key store. So that key store is available in our resource folder. Then password that we given while creating the SSL certificate. And here we are giving the type of that key store and alias name. That's it. And uh, I'm giving here server dot put called as 8443. Now let's see the next thing. So let's run the application. Okay, it is running. Now open the browser and here type HTTPS localhost 8443 and then slash hello. Okay, now you can see uh, this, uh, you can see here we can able to access this URL and you can see here uh, HTTPS instead of HTTP. But why it is red right now? There is one reason, okay? There is one reason because we are using a self-signed certificate and that browser or that vendors, clients like a Chrome or Microsoft Edge don't know about our certificate and our certificate is not trusted for them. So for that, what we can do, we can uh, purchase the certificate, okay? So basically uh, you will get the certificate free of cost for the 90 days. After this, it will get expired. Again, you have to uh, renew that certificate for next 90 days. So in that way, you can able to um, get that certificate free of cost. So that's all about the HTTPS and SSL. So if you like, so please share and subscribe to my channel and please do the comment. So I will get the motivation and I will add a new videos. Thanks for watching my video.